Good day to everyone. Today we will discuss how to wire the ATS panel control circuit, including generator auto start facility. To start with, we need two magnetic contactors for grid and generator power. One phase failure relay, two monitor, any fault on incoming three phase mains supply. Two timers and one UPDT relay, operational with 230 volt AC power from mains power grid. Another timer operating with 230 volt AC from generator power side. Timer and relay, operating with 12 volt DC power for generator auto start connection. And another timer and relay, also operating with 12 volt DC for generator stopping. Also need two units of two pole breakers to supply 230 volt AC power to the control circuit of ATS. Timers and relays operating with 12 volt DC power will get supply from the battery of the generator. Generator auto start connection points and the stop connection points also shown here. If you take out the timers and the relays from their bases, you will see the numbers on those ports like this. Let's see how these eight port timers and relays work. These are called DPDT, that is double port double throw, timers and relays. Double port means, there are two separate input ports here, numbered 1 and 8. Double throw means, each port has two outputs, where one is normally closed, and the other one is normally open. Number 7 and 2 are the power connection ports for these type of relays and timers. As soon as these get power, normally closed points will be opened, and the normally open ports will be closed. When power is connected through 7 and 2 ports, relay points are changed instantly, but timer switch waits, till a set time of 5 seconds here to pass, before interchanging its ports. Let's come back to the ATS again. 3 phase. 400 volts supply lines from mains grid, connected through the contactor to the load. Three lines from generator power connection, also connected to the load through the other magnetic contactor. Let's hide the three phase line, below the contactors temporally. Now, connect three phase lines from grid, to the phase failure relay. Connect, one phase line and the neutral line, to the two pole breaker. From the breaker out. Phase line is connected to the common port of the PFR. If there isn't any fault on three phases, PFR will close the normally open port on the left of the common port. It will be connected to the number 7 of the timer number 1. From number 7, power line is connected to the common port number 8. Neutral line need to be connected to the number 2 of the timer 1. From outlet port number 6. Line goes to the number 7 port of the DPDD relay. Number 7 need to be connected to the number 8 common port. Neutral line from grid side need to be connected to the number 2 of the relay. Outlet port number 6 will go through the normally closed auxiliary port of generator power contactor to the number 7 port of the timer number 2. Number 7 is then connected to common port number 8. Neutral line from grid side is connected to number 2. Outlet port number 6 of timer number 2 is then connected to the A1 operating coil end of grid power contactor. A2 coil end is connected with grid side neutral line. Let's go to the generator side now and one phase line is taken to the two pole breaker. Neutral line 2 need to be taken from generator side onto the breaker. From the breaker outlet Phase line is given to the number 1 common port of the DPDT relay. Then, outlet port number 4 of the relay is connected to the number 7 port of timer number 3. Number 7 is also connected to the number 8 common port. Then, neutral line from generator side is connected to number 2 port of timer number 3. Line out from port number 6 is then taken through the normally closed auxiliary contact points on the grid contactor to the A1 coil end of generator side contactor. Neutral line from generator side need to be connected to the A2 coil end of generator contactor. For generator auto starting, line from positive end of the battery need to go through the normally closed 
auxiliary contact points of the grid contact to first, before connecting to the number 7 port of the generator start timer. Number 7 port need to be connected to the common port number 8. Connect the negative end of the battery to the number 2 port of the timer. Connect timer outlet port number 6 to the number 7 port of the starting relay. Number 7 port need to be connected to the common port number 8. Number 2 port is connected to the negative end. Connect number 2 port to number 1 common port also. Now, if the generator auto start points are available and needs DC battery connection directly onto those points, you can wire positive and negative lines through the normally open relay outlet ports number 6 and 3, respectively. But, if the generator has provided start connection points through the solenoid connected to the starter motor, you need to connect and hold those points together till the generator starts after cranking. General condition is cranking to be stopped after 2 to 3 seconds and the generator will attain its normal RPM and voltage within a total of 3 to 5 seconds. For a system like this, you need an additional relay switch operating with the generator run signal to discontinue the start points holding line after generator starts. Generator start points can be connected through number 1 common port and number 3 normally open outlet port like this. Additional switch operational through the generator run signal is shown here. This is a normally closed switch and only opens when it receives the generator run signal. Now, let's assume that the generator run signal 2 is not available on your generator. Then we need to operate this additional switching port with another set of timer and a relay. This set also can be powered with the battery parallel to the present starting timer and relay set. But this switch should be connected with number 1 and 4 normally closed points on the relay. Opening of this switch will be through the timer after the generator starts. General cutoff time of cranking for a generator like this will be around 2 to 3 seconds but can be accurately set after starting your generator manually with a timer 2 to 3 times. For generator stopping, take the line from the positive end of the battery and should go through the normally closed auxiliary contact points of the generator contactor. This line should also go through the normally open auxiliary contact points of the grid contactor before connecting to the number 7 port of the generator stop timer. Port number 7 need to be connected to the common port number 8. Negative end of the battery need to be connected to the number 2 port of the timer here. Then, connect the number 6 port of the generator stop timer to the number 7 port of the generator stop relay. Connect port number 7 to port number 8 now. Connect the negative end of the battery to the number 2 port of the relay. Then, number 2 port needs to be connected to common port number 1. If the generator stop connection shows 12 volt DC supply to it directly, connect positive and negative lines through number 6 and 3 ports of the relay, respectively. If the generator has a stop connection where you need to hold these two points connected together till it stops, then connection can be given through number 1 and 3 ports of the relay, like this. Now, let's see the operation of this ATS. Neutral connections and battery negative connections kept connected for easy understanding. When three phase grid power is available on the contact to top, phase failure relay common port receives control power. PFR receives three phase power also at the same time. If the phases are in correct sequence and are without any under or over voltage, normally open port of PFR will close and allows power through it to the timer number one. This timer is to delay the grid supply to the load for around 5 minutes while generator is on load. 3 to 5 minutes delay can be set, assuming that mains grid power is without any interruption thereafter. After this delay period, relay is powered through number 7, 8 and 6. Normally open points will close now, allowing control power to the timer number 2. This timer is to delay the grid supply to the load after generator supply to the load is removed. You will experience 2 to 3 seconds power blackout 
during changeover to grid power from generator power, and is due to this time delay. We'll come back to this, when generator is loaded. Timer number 2, will then allow, control power to the grid contactor operating coil end, A1, enabling three phase power to the load. You must have seen, control power to the A1, pass through the normally closed, auxiliary contact points of the generator contactor, to enable safety interlocking, between these two contractors. Let's see what happens, when grid power goes off like this. Since grid contactor auxiliary contact points are closed now, 12 volt DC power passes through it, to the generator starting timer. Normally, around 2 to 3 seconds delay period is set on this timer, to make sure the power cut is not momentarily. Otherwise, power will be available within a moment, but generator also starts unnecessarily. After this delay period, relay will be powered, and thereby generator starts cranking. When generator starts, additional switch, powered by separate relay or the generator run signal, will cut off the power to the starter connection, like this. Now, three phase power is available, on the generator contact to top. At the same time, Generator control power gets to the timer number 3, through the 1 and 4, normally closed points, on the DPDT relay. Remember that, the relay is not powered yet, since power to that, is from grid side only. Timer number 3 is there, to delay the generator taking full load, immediately after starting. Generally, a generator from a cold start, is kept idling for 10 to 15 seconds, before allowing full load on it. Already with 2 seconds start delay, and 3 seconds cranking time, setting of 10 seconds on timer number 3, is well enough to allow, full load on generator. This means, after grid power goes off, generator power will be available on load after a lapse of 15 to 17 seconds. After this 10 seconds time delay, timer number 3 allows, control power to the generator contactor. That too is through the normally closed, auxiliary contact points of grid contactor, enabling safety interlocking, between the two contactors. When grid power is available again, PFO will allow, power to the timer number 1, through its normally open port, which is closed now. Although 3 to 5 minutes delay, is recommended on this timer, one minute will be enough to assume, that the grid supply is stable enough to replace generator power on load. After this delay, relay is powered, and with the opening of the normally closed ports of 1 and 4, generator contactor loses power, disconnecting three-phase power to the load. When the relay is powered, timer number 2 gets power, through number 7 and 6 normally open ports, which are closed now. Also note that, control line to the timer number 2, is through the normally closed auxiliary contact points of the generator contactor, providing safety interlocking between two contactors. Timer number 2, will delay loading of the grid contactor, by 2 to 3 seconds, after generator is unloaded. After this time delay, grid contactor receives control power, allowing load to get three phase power, from the grid connection. Since grid contactor auxiliary contact points, are open now, generator starting timer, loses its 12 volt supply. Further, normally open, auxiliary contact points on the grid contactor, are closed now. Since normally closed, auxiliary contact points of the generator contactor, also remain closed now, generator stop timer receives 12 volt DC power through those points. Generally, after running on full load, generator needs to run around 5 minutes, before stopping. With an average load, we can set, 3 minutes on this stop timer. After this delay period, generator stop relay is powered, and the generator is stopped, through the 1 and 3, normally open ports activation. Hope you got fair idea now, on ATS wiring with, generator auto start function. If this video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.